at Southwest Youth Collaborative in the Chicago Lawn neighborhood, something magical is happening. Thank you, everybody. This is our last week at summer camp. It's something about the, the circle work itself that really, it's, it's magical almost, you know. So I've been doing circles since 1997. My name is uh, Tony Joplin, and I am the program coordinator for the Restorative Justice Community Service Project here at the Southwest Youth Collaborative. All right, I um, just want to welcome everybody to our, our talking circle. Um, let's, before we start off, I uh, want to invite everybody to just put the feet on the floor, put the feet flat on the floor, uncross your arms, uncross your legs, and uh, just get relaxed. Get in touch with your breath so you can get here and present and grounded. At one time, the world here was living in harmony. Those teachings are valuable. We need to bring that back. My name is Sandra Sosa. Currently, I'm program director for an after school and summer camp program. This is our talking piece. Uh, it's a Maasai warrior, a tribe in, uh, in Kenya. And we'll use this to pass around. So whoever has the, the talking piece will be have the, have the floor, and the rest of us will listen. The Chicago Police Department wants to get more involved in and doing things in the community on the on a kind of a grassroots level. The idea was for them to sit down with with their parents and uh, people that maybe they had harmed in the community, and also have the circle become a place where they can actually discuss what's going on with them, may, what may have led up to them actually, do, you know, getting involved in some of the things they were getting involved in, um, and for them to, to to have a place where they can talk about and discuss and understand that there's accountability to and that there's consequences for all of their choices. I mean, I wasn't paying, I wasn't paying attention. So you would blame yourself, Yeah, you're saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm blame myself. Right, but you know there's no way you can protect her for those 24 hours. These kinds of restorative justice circles have been since the beginning of time. I think restorative justice has become kind of a fad nowadays, you know, popular word, a buzzword. But reality is that families have always been doing restorative justice at home. Every culture has where, they, where the, the, the community would sit in a circle and discuss whatever was going on in the village. We just kind of went back a little further and tried to look at what are the roots of that. The person who was speaking would have something symbolic so that people would listen. You know, the indigenous cultures in America, what we call the American Indians, uh, they would have, they would pass around sometimes a pipe or a, a stone or anything that symbolized that uh, I'm the one who's talking and everyone else gets to listen. The talking stick is a Nede ceremony. Nede means earth people. And the earth people are the Apache people. And what we were taught is that when there is lightning and it strikes the wood, it is the finger of God. I am Billy Topatate. Uh, that means four winds, and I'm very true to my name. I'm Mescalero Apache. We ask for all the people to take our ceremonies and to allow for them to be a great medicine as they were meant to be. When someone holds the talking stick, that they are uh, empowered, infused by the, uh, the power of, of, of the Creator. And so that person has the obligation to speak the truth in a joyful and loving and empowering way. Every, everything you do has a consequence, whether it's like a good consequence or a bad consequence. Like if you do, if you study for a test, you'll get an A. But if you don't study for a test, Obviously, the results are going to show. I um, got in trouble at school and was facing expulsion. I did end up getting expelled for selling drugs in school, so I had to complete uh, hours of community service. Hi, I'm LeVan Shade, and I uh, participate in the restorative justice program. He came through our program, completed all his hours, and he kept coming even though he didn't have to. I um, actually was referred through the justice system. They get referred to me, and then uh, we, I do an intake with them, and, um, and they, they are set up for a certain amount of community service hours, usually. This is one of the programs that I did to complete the community service. And as part of that, uh, 
we implement that they, you know, one of the things that we recommend is you come to the circles, you know. But after I completed my community service, I still came because I liked the, the process of the circle. We encourage each other, like, I, and they encourage me to keep going on the right track and I encourage them to follow me, you know, do the, do, make the changes that I've made. With many years of experience in restorative justice and social work under his belt, Tony Chaplin tries to explain how was it that the Chicago Police Department ended up resourcing to an ancient Native American tradition to prevent violence. These circles were researched by a social scientist for, for quite some time, and they kept coming up with the same thing. They found out that when you would have different uh, leaders of gangs, for example, sit down in a circle, and they would come to some kind of, you know, truces or something like that. They understood that the concept of the circle works. You know, it's, it's what happens in the circle when there's truth telling. There's something about the process itself that works. And, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, people from the police department probably sat in on some of those circles and uh, they found out that they do work. Changing the people that I hang out with, but just hanging out with people that are on the same track as me. Like I was in a circle and I liked the things that uh, Tony was doing. And, I, um, and he actually, he referred me to be uh, be trained to be a circle keeper. Well, that tells me that he was getting something from the program. And then not only that, but he actually stuck, stuck around and ended up getting the summer job. I did end up completing the program. Now I'm qualified to be a circle keeper. Giovanni, we're talking about what we learned this summer at summer camp. To program director Sandra Sosa, social work is not a nine to five job. This is the kind of work that um, your grandmother and your grandfather would do. They're gonna pull you to the side and they're gonna talk to you. They may not be your parents anymore, but they're there to help and guide you. And so the same, the same concept runs here. If we look at the way our ancestors were, everybody was taking care of everybody and it wasn't a job. Whether it's ancient magic or psychosocial therapy, the circles of truth have been part of our culture for centuries. They um, were able to open up to the circle. At Southwest Collaborative, a group of devoted social workers are determined to keep these circles and even spread them around. The concept is spreading. You know, the more people hear about it, the more they see how it works, the more people actually see what the difference, what the changes, what the transformations are that happen. It, it, it just blows their mind. All of these changes that I've um, experienced have happened to me in five months and I just, I think it's pretty amazing. Wow, this is the real thing. This is not program anymore, this is life.